Hi y'all, welcome to my shop. Some time ago I did a, a video on making a uh, honing disc and a, and a sanding disc. I'm not going to repeat all the content in that. If you're interested in watching that earlier video, you know, click on the link above. What I did not do at the time was make a sanding platform to make it a complete sanding solution. Uh, I'm going to, in just a moment, I'm going to show you a uh, video clip I did where I, I prepared a simple one that I could use on my Pyromatic, but I had some issues with it and I'll discuss it there. Uh, and I'll show you that. Since I do most of my turning uh, on the Pyromatic, I thought it'd make more sense for me to make a sanding platform for my Laguna. So I can just leave it sit up here. I don't use this that much except when I'm, I'm teaching. So if I need to sand something, I'll just be able to come over here and, and do it on this Laguna. And it's something I can pick up and lift off. Uh, without any any effort if I need to use use the lathe. So keep watching. A few years ago I demonstrated how you can easily make you a disc sander if you don't have one in your shop. You got a small uh, pretty basic wood turning uh, shop and I used a threaded glue block but of course you could use a, a face plate. Uh, if you miss that video you can click on the, the, the link above. Uh, but what I want to show you today, what I didn't show then, is sometimes it's very, most of the time, it's handy to have a, a little sanding platform. So I made a really uh, kind of a cheesy one out of, out of wood. I had some uh, thick, thick plywood and I used, unfortunately I used a very soft hardwood uh, uh, stand for it. Uh, basically you just drill a hole, a stopped hole and glue it in and then you've got a base to support any of the, the work you're doing. The problem I had with this though is with my old uh, Powermatic, and as with many other lathes, let me give you a, a close-up here, is that if you had one of those, uh, if you got one of those banjos that uses a, uh, just a threaded bolt that goes in, it really does a, a job, uh, uh, and before long this thing is just going to uh, be a mess and it might even deform it so bad you can't get it into your, your tool rest uh, holder. Uh, as shown in this picture here, showing the de deformations I had previously. I have another bell sander, so I didn't use this a whole lot, and this was one of the reasons why. But what I, but what I would suggest to you, though, if you have a banjo that uses some type of clamping mechanism, you're not likely to have that same kind of, kind of issue. It'll work, it'll work just fine. I would suggest using the hard, hardest wood you have uh, uh, available, whether it's oak hickory or persimmon, what, whatever, uh, it'll still uh, prevent it. So if I crank down on this pretty good where it's not moving anywhere, you can see here, uh, I got some of the most uh, actually barely visible uh, deformations. I if you're liking this video, please hit the like button and subscribe. Obviously, a metal rod would be uh, better for this solution as would a metal top, but I wanted something uh, cheap, quick, and dirty for those that don't have machining or welding skills. One option for a metal stand is a pipe flange and an iron pipe. This comes in a, a little bit more than an inch, so it needs a little little bit of work uh, on, on a lathe, sanding it down, or, or using a file or something. Uh, this one is available as a from Big Box Store Home Depot. It's actually used as a uh, stand for a shelf. In a pinch, I've used my box tool rest as a sanding, sanding platform. So I glue on a threaded glue block that I tapped with this one inch uh, beel, beel tap. A little glue on both sides. We got the sanding disc uh, trued up. Take a sheet of eight and a half by eleven uh, sandpaper. We're just going to hit it with a, a layer of uh, 3M Super 77 adhesive.
we'll let that sit for about 10 minutes and then we'll cut it away. I just trim off the sandpaper. I could probably do this with a lathe running and a skew, but I'd have to sharpen my skew. So. Voila. Here's my design and cut list. Uh, I don't have detailed plans. Your plans are going to vary based on the size of your, your lathe. I know it's hard to tell from watching this little video clip here, but when I use the miter gauge, I always move the fence away. There's always a gap between the fence so I don't get binding. Okay, time for glue up. Use a little original tight bond one, original tight bond. And I've marked where I'm going to put the glue. Got glue going everywhere. We're going to let that dry a little while before we're going to set it on the lathe bed and figure out how to glue this on the other end. Ideally, I probably should have route, I should route out an area here to get a little better glue, glue surface, but I think for what I'm doing, this will work fine. If I don't think it's strong enough, I'll come in here with some Craig, Craig screws. It gets more aggressive the further you, you uh, bring the wood out here. If you appreciate the time and effort I've taken to, uh, to create these wood turning tutorials, feel free to buy me a virtual cup of uh, coffee. Link is in the show notes. And y'all remember, stay safe. Come on back here.